The dawn of India's 60th year as a free nation saw the Times of India carry a front page with not a single piece of news, no editorial, no hurrahs, just the voice of a nation whose time had come. Perhaps inspired by the significance of the moment, the country's legendary film icon and easily the most famous Indian alive, Amitabh Bachchan, agreed to read out the ad on national television that day. Times of India called me from Delhi and, uh, and wondered whether I would be able to do uh, a few words uh, for this program. Uh, I read the piece and I uh, felt that uh, um, it was very inspirational, very uplifting for the country. And they would be interested in uh, making a video out of this because that would have a, a much greater impact and a much greater reach. The face of the India Poised campaign is none other than the Big B, Amitabh Bachchan. There are two Indias in this country. One India is training at the leash, eager to spring forth and live up to all the adjectives that the world has been recently showering upon us. The other India is the leash. One India says, give me a chance and I'll prove myself. The other India says, prove yourself first and maybe then you'll have a chance. One India lives in the optimism of our hearts. The other India lurks in the skepticism of our minds. One India wants, the other India hopes. One India leads, the other India follows. These conversions are on the rise. With each passing day, more and more people from the other India are coming over to this side. And quietly, while the world is not looking, a pulsating, dynamic new India is emerging. An India whose faith in success is far greater than its fear of failure. An India that no longer boycotts foreign-made goods, but buys out the companies that make them instead. History, they say, is a bad motorist. It rarely ever signals its intentions when it's taking a turn. This is that rarely ever moment. History is turning a page. For over half a century, our nation has sprung stumbled, run, fallen, rolled over, got up and dusted herself, and cantered, sometimes lurched on. But now, in our 60th year as free nation, the ride has brought us to the edge of time's great precipice. And one India, a tiny little voice in the back of the head, is looking down at the bottom of the ravine and hesitating. The other India is looking up at the sky and saying, it's time to fly. Over the next few months, that single piece of film and print would become a burning topic of debate among citizen forums and student groups across India. While the website became a global stage for passionate Indians around the world. The biggest challenge India faces. The politicians. We are losing uh, the family pride. Skill development. There are tremendous inherent strength within us. Politicians are not the only agency through which we can want change. I think we need to now give uh, substance. So that all citizens in a democracy become active participants, not passive recipients of what the politicians do. India Gate formed the backdrop for many a campaign and saw the emergence of a citizen movement that shook the entire system. Perhaps it's a mood across West Bengal. Now the challenge will be Tamil Nadu, the Kerala model of development. So overwhelming was the feedback that on the 15th of August, India's Independence Day, the Times of India rolled out another single front page ad that launched what could possibly become the most audacious and ambitious initiative in modern thought marketing. And this time, none other than the reigning box office mogul of the Indian film industry, Shah Rukh Khan, would say it with just two simple letters. Do. The last time we decided to do or die, it changed the map of the world. Today we've reached a stage where the eyes of the world are on us again. So what are we going to do? If India Poised asked you to seize the moment, Lead India urges you to take advantage of it. And let's face it, you never really caught in a traffic jam. You are the traffic jam. For the Times of India, 
the die was irreversibly cast. Over the next five months, the Lead India movement would search the length and breadth of the country, seeking to push forward a team of brave Indian professionals for the future political leadership of the world's largest democracy. It doesn't matter who becomes a leader, any one of you, but if you make a difference to them, that matters. Meanwhile, the nationwide fervor saw more and more role models coming forward to create the now snowballing advertising campaign. Glass aada khali hai aada bhara. Ye nirbhar karta hai apne apne nazariye par. I'm doing what I can. Are you? Maybe. Tomorrow actually begins. Today. All you need to do to create light is one single flame. चलो चले जो तुम चलो तो हिंदुस्तान चले The 2nd of October, the anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi and the final stage of the Lead India campaign. After weeks of camaraderie, heated debates and grilling interviews, it's down to the final eight across India. First, a look at those who've made it from the metros. Eight courageous, unflinching Indians got ready to face the cynics and pessimists on a primetime television reality show. सर आपके लिए उस पार कार का इंतजाम किया है सर चलो 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 कुछ करो ना जाके क्या तुम तो हिंदुस्तान चले तुम चलो The Star One Channel, part of India's largest television network, now joined the Lead India movement. Over the next 10 weeks, this group of eight would face the toughest grilling sessions from some of the most accomplished names on India's corporate, political and social scene and ultimately receive a scholarship to the Kennedy School of Political Leadership, win 100,000 US dollars to fund any public project and receive support to contest the next general elections, while all eight would go on to join public life on a national stage. I was in India when it was launched in August and every country needs some way to encourage the young to view themselves as having a role in making their own society a success. The scheme is designed for a small number of really top quality students and the ones we're talking about in particular tonight are at the London School of Economics which is a scholarship specifically for Indians who want to develop their leadership skills. Meanwhile, the race to the finish was hotting up. Devang Nanavati, R.K. Mishra. Devang, Mr. R.K. Mishra. Devang Nanavati, R.K. Mishra. R.K. Mishra. Ready, we are with you. R.K. Mishra is the best. The end of a long drawn search. Search for a future leader of the country. This man, R.K. Mishra, has been declared the champion of the Times of India Lead India campaign. The winner was announced by former President of India, Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam. I believe a Lead India movement uh, is indeed is the best movement I have come across.
so it was not a campaign it was not an advertising campaign a communication idea it was a movement and i think the the man behind the movement is with us i think i will request uh, kunal parker from my team to introduce him formally uh, kunal over to you yeah so we can start with the presentation yeah so like manisha said do when lead india launched it was not just a campaign like for us it was a movement and if you read the papers do in 2008 uh, it will also tell you that it was also a very proud moment for every admin in the country because this campaign won india's first ever grand prix at cannes and the first ever titanium integrated lion and it also won two another grand prix at goa you know? so let So actually, we are introducing a copywriter who needs no introduction. Uh, Agnello Dias, as we all know him, co-founder of Capital Dentsu, creative chairman of Dentsu Ages Network India, and also a fund owner. Okay, in the industry, he is popularly known as Aggie, and it is very surprising because he started his career as a copy trainee after trying to get into the industry for two years. Okay, and today, in a career spanning of thirty years. He has worked in several local and international agencies before he went to co-found his own agency called Tapwood India with his partner Santosh Pabbi. These are some of the agencies that he has worked in: like Dart, Inter Publicity, Loom, Leo Burnett, and JWT. So, needless to say, he has worked on some of the best brands from Times of India, Nike, to Mumbai Mirror, Airtel, Facebook. The list goes on and on. So this is my favorite part, you know. Like as a copywriter, he was deeply impacted by the words of admin like Mohammad Khan, Chris Di Rosario, Frank Simons, Alok Nanda, and many more. You know, all of these are great writers. Uh, and we found this article. Uh, you know, it's a very interesting piece. Uh, uh, Aggie wrote for Economist Times. The name of the article is "You Don't Need to Walk the Talk If You Can Write It." You can find it on the internet. All you need to do is uh, type Economist Times, walk the talk, and Aggie wrote this. Uh, and you can go through the article. Uh, it is a must read for everyone eager to get into advertising, wondering how they should talk or what they should wear. You know, it's kind of an eye opener. Yeah, moving on. So Agnello Dias is known as a guy who makes history with his work. You know, in 2007 he led JWT India to their best ever performance at Cannes by an Indian advertising agency by winning seven lions. The very next year, he made one of the first Indian ad films for Nike. featuring the entire indian cricket team in this ad film was the only indian tv commercial to get four in books at the end later in 2009 the stitch india campaign won a double grand prix at asia's media spike center so there's no wonder you know he is consistently ranked among the top creative personalities in india and his name keeps featuring and he has been featured in almost every award book that there is from the one show clio and kenj The DNAD, Ed Fest, Media Magazine, New York Festival, and of course, Go Office. Yeah. So in 2007, uh, 2011, though, he was conferred as the Communicator of the Decade Award by the Association of Business Communicators. He was also ranked among the world's 100 most creative people in business by Fast Company Magazine of the Year. And only a couple of years ago, he was inducted in the Hall of Fame by the Advertising Club Kolkata, the oldest advertising club in India. So yeah, let's everyone. Yeah. Uh, so I would uh, request uh, Shamima uh, to like you know unmute everyone for I mean, general norm of uh, our uh, session is that keep everyone muted. yeah my cursor was gone so uh, if everybody is unmuted i think i would uh, just uh, like 
tell everyone to i mean you know unmute and and kind of give a huge round of applause for agnello dias bro na yaar tu jawa ji nahi aa rahe tumhe now uh, shamima after uh, whatever the due time you needed you can mute everyone and we can start the session with aggi yeah so yeah aggi uh Uh, we will uh, start the session with your explanation and uh, thing to uh, we will uh, first wanted to hear uh, from you about the lead india and and over to you aggi uh, hi everybody can you all hear me i don't know whether you can see yes yes you can hear uh, we can hear you okay sorry my screen's gone blank no it's just a lead india which is there that's it okay so i can start right yes yes uh, so this is uh, first of all i must say that uh, it is an unbelievable initiative that manish and skekro have started because now i'm thinking why didn't i do something like this with taproot many years back but he has taken the initiative and it's great that uh, he calls people who uh, have done work in the past 10 15 20 years to share their experiences uh, with people who are working or trying to get into the business uh, because uh, i think the whole idea of this thing is for everybody to find uh, new mistakes to make uh, not make the same old mistakes because uh, as long as we find new mistakes to make and not make the same old mistakes that we made before then creatively you are progressing uh, and i feel that uh, we made many mistakes in our careers and finally it's brought us to where it is and it is our duty to warn people about the old mistakes so that they find other new mistakes to make so thanks a lot for doing this for the industry uh, for me it is a little embarrassing <laughs> to be uh, shown all this in in you know in the space of 10 minutes but this is the first this, i have seen this av now after 8 or 9 years and the one thing that struck me is that large parts of it you can run again because nothing has changed uh, what uh, what had happened in 2007 uh, 2008 was we were entering uh, the 50th year of our independence and uh, it is astounding that this campaign went on to have i think more than 150 print ads more than finally about 30 or 40 television commercials and uh, a whole lot of activation and television content what we now know today as content all starting because of one single press ad and actually it was only one press ad that started it that we started it with so before i go ahead i must uh, say that a lot uh, some of, a lot of the work that you see is actually not done by me alone but by me and a team so we must give credit to the people who work with me on on some of the campaigns and many of the campaigns here uh, so in no way take away from the fact that uh, we when we work together as a team you know more minds are better than one then i wrote this press ad actually it was written as an answer to a brief and not as an ad because there was some confusion about the clarity uh, of what we were going out to say between the creative team and the client servicing team and the client so i had actually written it out as a way of clarifying for everybody where we stand because uh, the creative team as usual wanted a clear brief you know? are we optimistic or are we pessimistic are we moving forward or are we moving backward and the client's uh, idea was that we were on the cusp of a precipice from here we could actually go on to become a superpower or we could if we don't grab this chance and that was 2007 uh, then we may actually spend another decade uh, as the power that we were so we are standing at that point where we could go either way and for the creative team uh, it was not an easy brief because you know as usual they were thinking of visuals and ideas that showed this uh, this dichotomy and i said you can write copy and even in the writing of the copy there was a lot of back and forth because they were feeling that we need to take a stand one way or the other so i actually wrote india versus india to clarify for everybody that we don't need to take a stand we can actually be on both sides and dramatize the tantalizing point at which the country stood and we sent this to the client to say look this is broadly what we are working on 
is this okay uh, with you as far as what you want to say and uh, we had brilliant clients at that time rahul kansal and priya gupta and all of them and either i think it was it was around 24th or 25th of december and this had to come out on the 1st of jan uh, so either there was less time or they genuinely saw the light in it and they said let's just print this thing let's just print we don't need to write another creative ad out of this let's print the brief uh, at which point of time i i kind of panicked because it i had not written it as an ad and i wanted to then make it shorter because it's too long to be a print ad uh, but they said uh, it went back and forth with the editor of the times and they said no we we'll, it then added another layer of pressure to me saying we will put only this on the front page of the paper and nothing else and that kind of scared me even more so i wanted to tighten it make certain parts and we kept you know, coming back in those 48 hours to saying stay where it is and let's not change anything and that's how it got printed actually and i thought that was the end of that uh, but a journalist from the television channel was introduced was interviewing uh, mr bachchan on the the occasion of us entering the 50th year and she had this as part of her you know part of her papers when she was asking questions and mr bachchan saw it and said instead of me giving an interview why don't i just read this out <clears throat> so the client called me and said uh, mr bachchan wants to read this out and uh, i think he was shooting with shujit at that time and uh, shujit was roped in and the first thing i told shujit saying it's not my fault you know i just wrote a print ad and this is what happened and you know so because he was he was doing something else with mr bachchan so we had four days between christmas and new year uh, one of the many christmases and new years that i have lost to work uh and uh, since there was actually very little production i just said well the well, one simple idea is we can go and shoot on the unfinished ceiling between worli and bandra because it is kind of a visual metaphor for an india that is half full and an india that is half empty and you can see the dichotomy running through the copy where one india is this and one india is that and we went ahead and shot it so uh It, it is actually a print ad on film, which which I would have never for the life of me thought of writing if I were to be given a film brief. You know, why would somebody just write a speech and say this is the film? Because you would think of visuals and music and uh, script and plot points and drama and storytelling to take it through. And here was just one long piece of copy being read out. But uh, it did uh, catch the fancy of many. It was used uh, in many. forums i think was used in the world economic forum and then a lot of people would ask to be to use it as a curtain raiser for their presentations and because it became so popular then we started roping in shankar ehsan loy and gulzar and uh, you know all of the other people to create more and more and more and more ads it eventually became a big movement a television program uh, you know the i would have never thought that the press ad that i thought to clarify a brief the road to clarify a brief would one day end up with me sitting in front of the president of india in delhi uh, and uh, eventually you know become the first time that the indian tricolor was unfurled on the grand prix stage at can it had never been done before all the other countries had done before so it it was a fairy tale journey uh, in a sense it was almost the career of a of of a, of a creative person in that one campaign because it was also a very long campaign uh, and when it finally uh, won uh, we were all happy that was a campaign that was not uh, just a campaign that uh, you know some part of the country has not seen everybody had seen it everybody had heard of it a large part of the country had taken part in part in it and it had been recognized on on, on a on a commendable stage a uh, commendable level of uh, excellence uh, at can so that's how that campaign happened uh, i think there must have been over 100 150 print ads because we eventually printed a book With the whole, with the whole thing. Um, so that's the the story of Lead India. I don't know whether this is enough, and or you want me to change. <laughs> no, no. I think I remember Aggie. I think I was uh, there. I witnessed in Cannes, and I was, I think, judging direct that time. And I think it was judged in our category also. And then we saw the India was uh, was on a Cannes stage and winning a first Grand Prix and all. I think it was it was a moment. It was a Google Goosebump moment, and I think. from a india poised campaign and one ad and it it led to this i think everybody has who were in the field of communication must have witnessed this entire journey in a directly indirectly in some form uh, my my building has one of the uh, 
shortlisted uh, contender in Lead India, uh, Vandana Shah. So I remember that the campaign, how it was unfolded, and then I think it was a, the one of the best pieces uh, of communication in India. Yeah, and as, as we say, it's a it was a movement. Uh, shall we uh, go to the yeah. uh, film uh, of the second film in this? Uh, yeah. So uh, because this was such a like a somber and serious thing, I just wanted to put a, a, sli a slightly different film on the second. This was for a brand of plywood. Uh, and this was done uh, with my co-creative director in Calcutta. I think uh, she was in Calcutta at that time, Suchi Smita Roy. Uh, uh, so this was uh, done with her in collaboration. And you know, it's a many times we say it's a tough brief. And what's a tough brief? Because it's for plywood and all they want to say that it's waterproof and it's tough. But there was something, uh, sometimes in many conversations, when you're looking as creative people to do something, you have to listen very carefully and closely because the smallest, least intended piece of uh, sentence or the smallest, least in intended word can actually spiral out. And you'll see this increasingly repeatedly in all the work, not only of mine, of anybody else. You'll see it spiraling out and then actually can become an idea. So if you don't listen carefully enough, then you're just listening to the big headlines. And if that doesn't work, then we say it's a tough brief. In this case, uh, it was uh, largely a cliched brief about uh, you know a brand of plywood being very strong, and it's a waterproof. But uh, at one point, a client said it's strong enough to be a floor, and I said, but why would you use it? Why would you use plywood on the floor? He's saying you don't use plywood on the floor, but the people use it in ceilings, and it's waterproof there. And uh, I had gone down below the building, and I saw uh, you know uh, some uh, trenches being dug on the road. And uh, I was thinking about this thing because I thought possibly if I think about this, it sounded interesting. That was floor and ceiling, floor and ceiling. And I went back and said, you know, in a country like India, uh, the way we live uh, in many places, one man's floor is another man's ceiling. Of course, in buildings, one man's floor is another man's ceiling, but sometimes literally the same floor and the ceiling is the same. And what if our product could become that and actually become waterproof and durable and show, uh, you know, uh, a small part of the kaleidoscope that is India. So you can play that commercial. Yeah. So uh, Aggie, small apology. I think we missing one Lead India ad, I think, because you were now. So is that okay? Or shall I play that one Lead India ad, which uh, which was there apart from the AV? It must be the same ad that was in the AV, right? Uh, no, there's one more. I think that uh, people uh, moving with the chair and stuff like that. Oh, no, no. That, oh, yeah. So, okay. So shall I play that first? Yeah, you can play that. This was uh, Lead India 2 after two or three years. And uh, uh, more. the reason why I want to talk about it is mostly everybody just said, you know, they should do something. They are not doing this. And I kept asking people, who is this they? And if nobody knew who they was. Some people said government. Some people said, you know, the way people say government, they don't say government. And some people said authority. Some people said bureaucracy. So I told them that there is no they. We are they. So then from there came this idea that hum hi wo or hum hi hum. And that's when we wrote this strong, uh, song about not sitting on your backside, actually getting up and doing something on your own. So you can play that. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I'll uh, go to. Uh, yeah, go to. I've spoken about century ply. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. सेंचुरी प्लाई सब सहे मस्त रहे सो एक्चुअली टू बी ऑनेस्ट आई वाज वेरी लकी विद दैट ब्रेक यू नो व्हेन आई जस्ट वेंट डाउन एंड ही जस्ट सेड दिस वी मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन दिस इज फॉर एयरटेल अगेन दिस वाज सम इयर्स बैक एंड एयरटेल हैड जस्ट डन टू वेरी famous corporate films one was barriers break when people talk and one was express yourself and the brief given very simply was that the brand wanted to get a little younger uh, because the the philosophy the philosophical outlook that they were portraying regarding the telecom category as a filter like barriers break when people talk or express yourself was working it wasn't not working and uh, the problem was that it was being seen as an old fashion brand that was getting a little preachy so they didn't want to lose that uh, annual kind of telecom philosophy that they put out but they wanted to still be younger and uh, we we had a lot of discussions and we were going to be cutting this short so you must understand that uh, in conversations like this it almost looks like we you know go somewhere and sit quietly and something just enters our head through some divine inspiration and some light but that's not how it happens we write lots of stuff that gets cancelled and gets rewritten and we sweat blood and tears and we don't do it so it's bad and it's good and then we eventually reach you know a forum like this where i'm presenting like so i can't take you through all that because that would mean sitting here for many many days but i can take take you through the uh through the you know uh, road map broadly so it gives you an idea of where we went so through many discussions we said but you know philosophy is old fashioned how can we do youth and youth is not philosophy how can we and obviously when whenever there's a tussle between two opposing forces like this uh, that the great the, a good idea or an advertising idea's job is to marry the two and not lose both and eventually we reached a place where i said it started with something called a you know which we all know now called the 3 am friend that you know that you always have one friend who you would call at 3 am if something is wrong and so only that and uh, it it kind of seemed incomplete so from there it actually went into many kinds of friends uh, because technology has allowed us to have far more friends than is physically possible in the physical world right when the, before the internet and i maybe a lot of you are not before the internet but there used to be four sets of friends in our lives one was the friends that lived in the area you grew up with the second is the school friends and college friends the third is work friends and finally as you grew older parents of your kids friends and they became your friends there was no other real group uh, but now you had friends who you never met for years who would only send you you know an activist kind of uh, forward from time to time or somebody who would send you only send you dirty joke only the, the good morning friend and all that so technology had made this possible and honestly this idea of every kind of friend is now possible and therefore important is an idea that could have been taken by anybody it could have been done by facebook it could have been done by insta it could have been done by any telecom brand but because we stumbled on it first and airtel kind of owned it first it became synonymous with the brand airtel and therefore the philosophy that you can have any kind of friends i remember a slide in the presentation which said uh, philosophy can be philosophy even if it's not preached from the pulpit in church but it can also be spoken from the last bench in class because in college we have this guy who is always the you know philosopher but he's he's a he's a friend like us but he always says the funny thing about 
you know a, a different take on what we do so what if we do that kind of philosophy it is a very simple technique which was made very popular in later years by raju hirani in, in all his movies but you can still give out a message without it being heavy and heavy handed and from that first anthemic film of her friend zorulie we then made many smaller films which each kind of friend so you can play actually uh, both of them because uh, the second one is one example of the smaller film there were many so you will see two films together one is the launch and the second is one of the smaller films so you can Again, play the would, next one. Yeah, yeah i would like to add a little which yeah. i actually added when even paddy uh, yeah. your partner came and uh, done a mom session physically in stacro office that often advertising uh, is been underrated but uh, it has given a culture uh, a symbol or a metaphor like for example happiness has been uh, is uh, been in the form of a metaphor of santa claus given by coca cola for 100 years of advertising similarly uh, when we see and think of a friendship as a as an emotion i think uh, in in history and mythology you go then there will be krishna and sudama then there is a uh, when you when you when you see cinema you go jay and viru of shole i think advertising uh, gave a friendship metaphor i think none other than this this communication i think i i consider uh, this communication as a as a one of the three one of the one of the three based metaphors of friendship uh, to us uh, indian culture so i think i i personally see it that way also so yeah कोई सुबह पाँच बजे नींद से जगाए कोई रात को तीन बजे जान बचाए एक तेरी कड़की में शेरी करे और एक तेरे बजट में स्नीकिंग करे कोई नेचर से गेस्ट कोई होस्ट होता है पर हर एक फ्रेंड जरूरी होता है एक घड़ी घड़ी काम आए पर कभी कभी कॉल करे एक कभी कभी काम आए और घड़ी घड़ी कॉल करे गॉसिप का कोई घूमता फिरता सैटेलाइट कोई साथ रहे तो कर दे सब ऑलराइट कोई एफर्टलेस कोई फोर्स्ड होता है लेकिन हर एक फ्रेंड जरूरी होता है चैट रूम फ्रेंड कोई क्लास रूम फ्रेंड कोई बट पे रेस वाला रूम रूम फ्रेंड शॉपिंग मॉल वाला शॉपिंग फ्रेंड कोई एग्जाम हॉल वाला कॉपिंग फ्रेंड मूवी वाली ग्रूवी वाली हाई वाली बाय वाली टॉप वाली पॉप वाली खाना वाली शाना वाली चटी वाली यार वाली कुत्ते कमीने एवरीबॉडी सब बड़ी ए टू जेड किन किन के नाम भेजा रोस्ट होता है पर हर एक फ्रेंड जरूरी होता है लेकिन हर एक फ्रेंड जरूरी होता है हर फ्रेंड जरूरी है यार और हर फ्रेंड से कनेक्टेड रखे एयरटेल दिल जो चाहे पास लाए पुलिस को फोन लगा यार लगा मिस कॉल दिया है करेंगे वापस ऐसे हर एक फ्रेंड जरूरी होता है अब बिंदास कॉल कर रात भर एयरटेल पर हर फ्रेंड जरूरी है यार yeah hitachi yeah sorry so uh, i'm i'm one of maybe one of the last few advertising guys who's uh, large part of his career was in the pre internet era so the good thing is a lot of this is may not be on the internet so i thought i'll bring some of that back because otherwise most of this you can see on the internet and therefore some of the films will jump backwards and they may look as little dated uh, hitachi is a good example there are two films here one was a clear product demo and one was a a simple brief like saves electric power so both would normally qualify as what we would call a cliche brief which is you know everybody says saves less power saves saves power and therefore gives you less bill and everybody says cools and freezes faster uh, 
than anybody else. So how can you show speed of freezing? So first let's talk about saves power and gives you a, a lower bill. So many times when we can't find what we are looking uh, for in uh, the product solution, we start looking for something that would happen if the product did not exist. So what if we were not there? Show a world in which the product does not exist and maybe there is drama there. In this case, uh, it was a common Hindi phrase when they say billboard lamba hai, a time, a time billboard bada hai or billboard lamba hai. And I thought if we, I thought if we dramatize that and show a bill that is so long that when you get it at home, it's still being printed in the, in the electricity bill office, then that would make a great metaphor for, uh, you know, the, the kind of uh, trauma that a person goes through with his electricity bill because of the AC. So actually, uh, 70 to 80 percent of the film is not about the AC at all. It's not even about the cooling of the AC. It is about what happens in another department entirely, electricity office, when they send you a bill that is too long for your comfort. And then we dramatize it and made it interesting to watch. Uh, I, I think this was the, possibly the first or second film that Hitachi did to launch ACs in India. And then the second film is completely different. It's not part of a campaign like Her Friends or Rudy. It's about the speed of cooling. And uh, I was challenged by a person in my office saying, can you do a demo which shows how fast it can cool without, without resorting to a, a, you know, gimmickry which shows things melting in computer graphics and all that. So you can see that that's a, that's a straight clean demo which uses a character that has a completely different problem than cooling. He has a problem with sound and how he uses fast cooling to solve the problem with sound. Can you play the next two commercials? Yeah. <clears throat> electric bill? Long, long electric bill? Yeah! Giving you shock, making you walk over the street, into the blocks. Electric bill. From here to there, God knows where. This is the start. Don't lose heart. Under the car, over the car, bridge too far. Air mind the car. Grass is green everywhere. Bill is not ending there. Pulling the line, running with time. Now who let the dog out? <laughs> Up the hill like Jack and Jill. What do you find? Electric bill. One way, two way, this way, that way. Very long. Like film song. Middle of the road, going strong, bill is going on and on. Electric bill, very long. End of song. Keep track of your electricity bills with the power index in the new Logical Mew from Hitachi. That's Chetan, right? <laughs> yes, Chetan, and this was written by a, a close creative friend of mine at that time by Milind Daimadi. I said, can ah, you write a correct, song for me? Correct, correct. So he said, okay, I'll write a song for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For really, really fast cooling, the powerful mode in the new logical eye from Hitachi. So that was a demo. I we'll, I thought we'll mix it up with a few press ads and print work, and, and that's what even even uh, Manish film felt. So uh, this was a brief for a Saturday. Uh, I think it was a Saturday newspaper that came out only every Saturday, and it looked at it did not report the news. It did not report what happened last night or what happened in the morning. It took issues in society and issues in society and had a point of view or a logical debate that went in depth into say five or six stories or eight or 10 stories of that week. And then went in depth into how uh, the, two the two sides of the story balanced out. So it was not a reportage kind of newspaper, but it was a, it was a feature newspaper. And in print, it's, uh, you know, the, the typical uh, easy way to do this is to write a copy, which is it's an opportunity to write good long copy. But we wanted to do make it visual and dramatic because we were dealing with an era at that time where attention spans were shrinking and now we know that they have shrunk. And therefore there are two uh, sets of campaigns. One is which shows the depth at which the reportage of the newspaper goes through. 
by the simple metaphor of a window in a person's mind and the other is to show how it gets up close to issues so so close uh, that uh, you know the kind of perspective you get on the story is not what you would get in any other paper so many times when we are thinking creative we use what we normally call the moral of the story which is if if forget about everything that happens on ground if this were to happen in real life what would happen and you'll see this later on in the mumbai mirror work as well that you know a person sitting in a house or a or a poor man walking the street what if he came face to face with a politician or a leader and were able to look him in the eye and ask him what he wanted if that itself becomes a visual then it makes a fairly dramatic case for a for a newspaper to read we thought and that's why we did the second campaign so you can go through five or six uh, ads i think the first two are about the depth of the reporting and the second is about how close the the paper came up to issues so this was a simple window in people's minds uh, i can't read the copy actually what does what china does china, yeah. china actually think about us and i think this was an issue uh, which talked about uh, china's growing hostility towards india at that time this lines peep into the world yeah peep into the world sorry Yeah. I can't. I have not read these lines for years, yeah, Manish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what. Whose business is the religion, religion anyway? Anyway, yes. I mean, I wish we had. We could read the copy, but it's fine. We can move yeah. on. I think there's a larger copy to read. We'll try a platform where they can see the work later in some form. Yes. Yeah. So this is the second part of it. When they come face to face with issues, which is come to face to this one said come face to face with the other India. I think I can read this. Yeah. Presenting a close, unwavering look at the issues that affect the way we live, the politics of scarcity, the scarcity of morals, the morals of business, sports, entertainment, current affairs, and more. The Crest Edition it puts the week in perspective every Saturday. Mm hmm. Yeah, we could run this ad today, no? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Obama. That's Manohar. <laughs> yeah, just come face to face. I think this was a big issue on the Taliban at that time. Yeah. Come face to face with the Taliban. Correct, correct. But it's just a, such a simple idea, no? To just say, if the people who are reading the paper came face to face with the uh, face to face with the face of the issues. that would make for a visual yeah etel tsn so oh. this uh, i just put it because it was quite a controversial ad at that time and i i don't know why it became controversial it was a ad about a working woman and uh, there were a series of three or four where we wanted to show uh, the simple idea that we had uh, presented and actually got approval for was modern day relationships you know relationships Fifteen uh, years back are no longer the way they were to they are today. Uh, some of them, I mean, ob other than the obvious cliches of uh, you know uh, people living in nuclear families and all that, uh, some of them are uh, you know step mother step child relationships. Some of them are uh, you know live in relationships. Some of them are LGBTQ related. So we we thought we'd do a series on modern relationships. This was the first one in that series, and I thought it was. very normal and a lot of people thought i did it we did it because we wanted to make it sensational or controversial i didn't we didn't realize it at all we just thought she just goes home and make something for herself to eat and calls the husband home but it it became so controversial that i honestly believe it became it got more traction because of the controversy than actually how how creative it was if it was for the controversy it would have been a decent okay nice film but it became a far more watch film because you know the how things start on the internet and everything goes viral for no reason so in a way we were lucky but this is how it was kind of play choice nahi hai tumhe ye karna hi padega lekin priya itne kam time mein ye sab kaise hoga sorry guys you'll have to manage it okay you should start now Is it going? Okay. कुछ हो तो कॉल करना
अच्छा रोहित मैं घर पहुंच रही हूँ तुम डिनर में क्या खाओगे ओके टाइम लगेगा बॉस ने बहुत काम दिया है बाय काम ना बॉस को बोलो कि वाइफ बुला रही है तुम ही बोलो ना बॉस को जल्दी आना वेट करूंगी कभी कभी बस एक स्मार्टफोन लाइफ में थोड़ा मैजिक ला सकता है तभी तो खास स्मार्टफोन्स के लिए बना है एयरटेल द स्मार्टफोन नेटवर्क सो आई आई स्टिल नॉट अंडरस्टूड व्हाई इट व्हाई इट हैड सच आई डोंट नो या बट इट इज व्हाट इट इज द नेक्स्ट वन इज फॉर बॉम्बे टाइम यू विल सी अ लॉट ऑफ बॉम्बे मुंबई इन माय वर्क बिकॉज़ आई वाज बोर्न हियर एंड अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर बोर्न हियर अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल कम इन हियर बट आई आई एम प्रीटी आई हैव अ प्रीटी सॉफ्ट कॉर्नर फॉर द सिटी आई एम अ फैन ऑफ द सिटी बिकॉज़ आई बिलीव देयर इज अ बिट ऑफ Mumbai and everybody in India, and they find it when they come here. Uh, so for all its for all its uh, brickbats, I think it's a, it's a nice city to live in. It's I like it. Uh, I don't think any other city uh, takes so much as Bombay does and gives what it does. Uh, I think also the punishment for failure is high in Bombay, and that's what makes people uh, who come here strive that much more. Uh, I don't think anywhere in India the punishment for failure is as high as that. So, some people say it's desperation. Some people say it's you know survival. Some people say, but it is what it is. So this was an ad for Bombay Times. Tricky brief because uh, Bombay Times is about you know uh, to many people uh, superficial glamour, superficial style, maybe you know slightly frivolous kind of shallow look at society. I mean that's that is a perception. Yet everybody reads it. So in many ways it's like Bombay. Where everybody abuses it and says this is wrong with it and that is wrong with it, but everybody comes here, and everybody who comes here they abuse it, but they will never leave. So it's like a drug. So uh, I uh, said to the client, look, there's no point. Same clients as Lead India, there's no point trying to say that we are not about style and glamour. We are not superficial. Let's embrace it. Let's say we are. This is the way we are. We are glamorous. In fact, we are so glamorous that we are born with style. and therefore let's take iconic characters from the city like a person working in a government office the guy who delivers your gas cylinder uh, you know they'll always have a bit of what is today called swag in them and let let me let me dramatize that because that will make it uh, an unab- unabashed embrace of what we are so there's no point saying we are not this this is how we are we are a stylish supplement advertorial to the main paper Uh, we like glamour we like style and uh, if you don't like us tough luck but we are not going to hide about who we are and therefore uh, we wrote this and i just on a whim you know i wanted to rewrite it pyar kiya to darna kiya so i wrote this one line called style mara to darna kiya and we did this commercial and it was great fun shooting because a lot of people on the streets actually turned up to watch us and you know wanted parts of the props and the clothes i think one or two of the props are still in my house So can you play Bombay Times? Yeah. Man, Tara is a singer, right? Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, do we next have I Need India, or we put that in front, right? We have now Mumbai, the guts of the nation. 
so uh, like i was saying before maybe coincidentally i started talking about mumbai this was written actually this is not a brand ad this was written after the 2611 terror attacks and india today wanted to do a feature on what the city what the city believed in and i remember at that time uh, one of the cafes that was shot down opening in four days after the terror attack to record crowds and uh, there is a there is a a uh, divided opinion on whether it is the guts of the city or whether it's a it's a you know it's desperation but it is a city that actually uh, has two sides to it and one side is good and one side is controversial usually so a long time back a very senior person in advertising had asked me that you know uh, calcutta is the creative capital of the country or the cultural capital of the country and delhi is the you know is the heart of the part of india and bharat ka dil hai delhi and the intellectual power actually lies in bangalore with all its soft software and you know uh, stress on education so bangalore is really the brains of india bombay mein kya hai i didn't say it but there was another guy with me at that time he says sir bombay hai na india ka jigar hai bombay which is i thought at that time that jigar meant guts but it was not exactly that so yeah i said bombay is the guts the guts of the country if you could ever have it and therefore i had written this ad for the india today called guts which i can read out if you can't see but it was a simple typo ad which said mumbai the guts of a nation and uh, it says not the money it makes not the pace it sets not the dreams it sells a city is made by the guts it shows on a day when you are hit by 14 terrorist by four terrorist strikes in 15 minutes and half the city rushes to help instead of rushing away that's guts when you pay almost half the nation's taxes in return for almost half its liabilities and will show up at work when the train services are disrupted that shows guts as well when you crush a man firing an ak47 in a bear hug so all the bullets stop in your body and don't hit anyone else that's guts when you abandon your fancy car on a flooded road and wait on to keep an appointment with someone who's probably just abandoned the virar local that's guts when a cabby drives a pregnant woman to hospital through bullets and grenades at no cost but overcharges the next customer to cover his loss that's guts when you open a vada pav stall next to a mcdonald's and believe it's fair competition that's guts when a cafe that's been blown to bits by terrorists opens to records crowds in just 3 days causing it to close early because it can't handle the demand that's guts so the point really is this you can bomb our hotels and shoot out our railway station you can't you can spill our blood and you can shed our tears you can narrow our minds and widen our distances but what can you do about our guts mumbai the guts of our guts of nation keep the game so i was not very sure about print on this in this format but uh, i think manish felt that it should be there and that's why it's here so yeah change the game hmm. yeah so uh, this is a campaign for pepsi i think everybody remembers it it, it was the orig- originator of many cricketing terms like the helicopter shot which i used even today uh a simple brief because i like a simple what i call a simple or a good brief is a brief that identify that has a problem so if there is a problem with the brand i think i'm safe because then i know there's something to solve the tough briefs are where there is really no problem actually so a lot of your time is spent finding the problem because there is no problem so you create imaginary problems and if you get it wrong you get the creative wrong in this case uh, the problem was very simple uh, for many years pepsi was compared to coca cola at that time was the irreverent anti establishment uh, slightly renegade brand that stood for everything that was not official they had even done a campaign called nothing official about it and coke was you know the big brother the the official drink of everything it was establishment it was classical it was it was the system and pepsi stood for you know the challenge to the system as a challenger brand so what happens now when the boot is on the other foot and pepsi suddenly gets sponsorship of the world cup it is now the official sponsor of the world cup something that they had done a totally anti campaign with uh, you know a few days back a few years back saying nothing official about it and uh, we did a, i mean again we did a lot of work and a lot of work got bounced and a lot of work was uh, rejected internally and externally but uh, finally we had this idea where uh, we said that no other game has had as much change in the way it is played in the way it is watched and in the way it is uh, 
commercialized as cricket has you know football tennis most of these are the same with a few differences but cricket has changed more than any other game and one of those changes was the shots that were played in cricket now were out of the mcc textbook they were they could not be in any coaching manual or school you know or or school school book on cricket and therefore it was really anti establishment so what if in spite of pepsi became being the official partner of the world cup it becomes the unofficial sponsor of this part of the game the part of the game that is against all rule books you know what we used to what we used to call people shots because it looks like we can play the shots it looks like we can play the reverse sweep it doesn't look like i can play a classic cover drive like rahul dravid i see it and i say i can't do this but it looks like i can hit a shot over my head you know because this is what we feel we can do in the streets and that's why it became so popular so the whole case study explains it really but i to be honest feel it got a fair degree of mileage more than it actually deserved because we also won the world cup and i remember meeting dhoni and the first thing he told me was saying don't do a campaign that says we are going to win the world cup it puts a lot of pressure on us and the previous camp previous campaign was how india is going to win the world cup and we were knocked out of the world cup in 2006 so he was happy with this campaign even we were happy with this campaign because we thought even if india doesn't do well it's a campaign about the new face of cricket and that is something that would stand up in good stead so we play the audio visual that shows the actual entire scale of the campaign and there's one film in the audio visual one ad and after the audio visual we'll play three other ads that don't feature in the audio visual audio visual do you remember them but uh, you can see them and uh, you know talk to me about them if you want later in 2011 The ICC Cricket World Cup was staged in India after 15 years. Close to one third of the world's population across 180 countries would end up watching it. And Pepsi, the brand that stands for everything unorthodox, irreverent, anti-establishment, and unofficial, Pepsi. Nothing official about it. Uh huh. Was now the official partner of the World Cup. Our radical, counterintuitive idea stemmed from a simple observation: no other sport in recent memory has undergone so much change in so short a time as cricket, in the way it is played, watched, and enjoyed. Most importantly. The game is now full of out of the box radically unorthodox cricketing techniques that have no place in the coaching manual and are frowned upon by the purists but those who perfect and play them are the game's biggest superstars have been launched the triangle the slinger the helicopter shot the dusra the balti hit the upper cut the dil scoop hai tera pallu 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 hai Bad luck, 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 bad luck
ਸਾ ਸਾਰੇ ਗਾਵਾ ਹੂਦੋ ਸਾਰੇ ਇੱਕ ਨੋਟ ਆਪਣਾ ਸਾਲ ਲਗਾਣਾ अन्ना हजारे ने आज पेप्सी का चेंज द गेम कैंपेन ज्वाइन कर लिया और अनाउंस किया है कि जन लोकपाल बिल का स्लोगन होगा कस के पकड़ जम के जकड़ लगा उल्टी हो या उल्टी हो बात हो करी करी अपनी ही या लाइफ तो है तो जी लो मस्ती हो भरी जितना हंस मन लो ये नियम सारे तेरे ये दिखा रहा हूं और तू क्या कर रहा है ऊपर से आने का नीचे दबाने का पीछे उठाने का हां हां no sweetie abhina watch carefully huh and do what i'm doing hi hi re mera pallu come on dilshan come on do exactly the same huh take care of your shoulder put your leg like this first and go hi 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 mera pallu hi hi tera pallu 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 hi dilshan wahan pe bhi yahi karna hai Official sponsor of the Dil Scoop. Ab look and concentrate, ah, pao dur dur. Shabash. Now take that Buja Peterson, bhaiya. Put inside. Alti palti. They guma ke. Samjhe? Samjhe, samjhe. Now show them. Take that Buja. Put inside. Alti palti. They guma ke. पीटर भैया वहां पे भी यही करना ऑफिशियल स्पॉन्सर ऑफ द पल्टी हिट सिंपल है ये आ तो ग्रे से ला कमर भी ला शक्ल पे एक्सप्रेशन ला मैं तेरे को ये दिखा रहा हूं और तू क्या कर रहा है अब ध्यान दे यार बड़ा सिंपल है ऊपर से आने का नीचे दबाने का पीछे उठाने का हां म्यूजिक उधर से लाने का नीचे दबाने का पीछे उठाने का हां 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 आजा कम ऑन वीरू शाबाश म्यूजिक आजा उधर से लाने का नीचे दबाने का पीछे उठाने का हां हां वीरू वहां भी यही करना है हेलो जी उधर से लाने का नीचे दबाने का पीछे उठाने का हां 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 द ऑफिशियल स्पॉन्सर ऑफ द ऊपर कट एमसी डेंस ओके सो व्हाट वाज ट्रिकी अबाउट दिस कैंपेन एक्चुअली इज दैट इफ यू नोटिस द लास्ट एक्चुअल शॉट इज फ्रॉम अ रियल मैच so what i had to do is i had to first see a lot of match footage find a shot that i thought would work then write the script backwards to it because i i can't write a script for a shot and then find out that there is no such, such shot in a real match so there was no scripts presented till we went through a lot of footage found our shots in fact it was a campaign that ran with uh, shakib in bangladesh it ran with malinga in sri lanka it ran across a lot of many countries but we always had to go through tons of footage find a shot that fit our idea and then write the script backwards then go and shoot the script but otherwise there is no script 
so i just want to uh, show you a series of press ads now this is uh, for the ganesh festival in bombay and i have always felt that ganesha or ganpati as we call it is the most creatively fr creatively friendly god in the hindu pantheon because somehow for for no uh, i have never found out the reason but it's the, it's the god that is most creatively used uh, across uh, you know the the creative industry in india and this was a campaign we done for uh, for uh, the times of india where we they award a prize to the best ganesh idol in the city it all seems like a far away romantic time now when we used to have actual people on the streets compared to what happened in the last two years but what i liked was can you show the ads please i what we what i liked was the creative use of creating ganesha out of now if you zoom into this for example it says gali gali mein ganesha but it's a ganesh dancing ganesha idol created out of landmarks of the city so if you could see it closer you would know that you know that's the taj mahal hotel dome which is the crown that's a street elephant in the middle there are stock exchange buildings which are his ears there are bsp buses there are dabba walas there are police jeeps there are auto rickshaws there is a gateway of india there is a rajabai clock tower there is a traffic signal there is a truck there is a nehru planetarium all of that is there in this to make this so i thought it was a fantastic piece of uh, design that depicted how uh, you know the spirit of the festival actually permeated every corner of the city and the headline says it all gali gali mein ganesha and then as the contest went on and we showed you know the the day of the the worship then we created it out of all the fruits ever placed uh before the deity for worship and then eventually on the last day a ganesha made out of many ganeshas in fact this was uh, so it says ganesha maximum competition this was an ad that was so popular that the year after this ad the next year one of the pandals actually made a ganesha out of many ganeshas took a picture and came to the office and gave it to us saying we did this because last year all made this ad was this done by uh, with ramu no No, Ramu had done another series. Ah, okay. Uh, I got missed. Sorry. Yeah. So Ramu also does one every year, but this yeah, was yeah. not. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we'll move on to uh, what was it? I mean, can we said today and even then was a controversial uh, assignment. It was an assignment that asked for peace between the people, at least of India and Pakistan. Uh, it did not uh, condone uh, the acts of terror that were happening from Pakistan, but. culturally uh, asked whether we could be a fit because we were actually one people and divided by a bureaucratic wrangle during the british leaving india so it is called aman ki aasha uh, it is a it is a idealistic pipe dream it is a, a brief that came from from the client was done it was run in india and in pakistan and it was a case study that uh, you know polarized a lot of people uh, which which we knew would happen because of the situation in the country but creatively i thought we did a very good job in actually balancing out the the negativity that was needed and we said at least let's start a conversation for peace it's not because we don't it's not like anybody in india wants to destroy pakistan we just want pakistan to stop doing what they are doing and continue to be peaceful towards india but there was no feeling on the ground that people want the country uh, which was unable to be eliminated we just didn't want them to take part in any terror activities and therefore culturally we were similar in in many ways so it did attempt and try uh, what is one side of the argument which is can we find love on both sides of the border and let politics and uh, you know all the other people sort out the differences that they have so this is an audio visual that shows you both the film and the campaign and the whole ad This is the story of two nations born after a labor of violence, bloodshed and hatred over 60 years ago. The first anniversary of the Mumbai terror attacks last year saw India-Pakistan hatred at its peak. With the subcontinent seething on the verge of a catastrophic confrontation, the Times of India joined hands with Pakistan's Jung Group in a historic first for a daring new initiative. The idea was to launch a courageous cross-border people-to-people movement through print, television, radio, internet, mass live events and citizen activation. And this is how it unfolded. 
on 1st January 2010, the world's largest English newspaper put out possibly the most courageous front page in the history of Indian media. Love and Pakistan? After what happened in Mumbai? As an incredulous nation woke up to the audacity of those simple brave words that stood defiantly against the jingoism of war, Aman Ki Asha was born. Four words. First, uh, uh, Dil, Dil, yeah. Open, full, kilte, gulshan, no. Shah Rukh Khan, Shah Rukh Khan ki picture hai. Dusra word, dusra. Uh, <laughs> sharmati hai, heroin sharmati hai. <laughs> heroin dulan hai. Chali jati hai, bhaag jati hai, ghode pe bhaga leta hai hero. Hero ka dil, dilhan, jana, jayenge. Mil gaya. Oh Manjit, radio station ko phone laga jali. Oh Radio station ko phone laga! All India Radio. एक फरमाइश है। आप सुन रहे हैं ऑल इंडिया रेडियो का रंगारंग कार्यक्रम। अगली फरमाइश दिलवाले दुल्हनिया ले जाएंगे। नजर में रहते हो जब तुम नजर नहीं आते, ये सुर मिलाते हैं जब तुम इधर नहीं आते, ये सुर बुलाते हैं जब तुम इधर नहीं आते। न अमन की आशा is an Indo-Pak peace project, a project which brings together the media, literatures, cultural personalities, thinkers, writers, all coming together in a different kind of interchange. The whole attempt is to make sure that people on both sides of the border look at the other side differently. Almost immediately, online communities sprung up as media spaces were swamped with a burning debate about peace over irrational hatred. The growing response led to the Hope for Peace Music Festival as legendary vocalists from Pakistan braved the fundamentalists to cross the border and perform with Indian artists on a common stage. Several people, we've always, artists have always longed for peace, but now uh, sort of seeing that there are many, many more people who, want, who desire and actually demand peace. And soon a literary festival and a food festival saw eminent Pakistani writers, journalists and playwrights sharing the dice. कि मेरे बाप ने भी मुझसे बिना पूछे मुझे पैदा क्यों किया था। Meanwhile, a massive school activation program saw the next generation writing peace messages on handkerchiefs to create a chain stretching all the way from India to students in Pakistan. 200,000 plus handkerchiefs at last count. Today, the movement has music and screen icons on both sides joining the cause. Massive editorial and PR worth over $2.5 million. Commendations by world governments. Cross-border business and trade conventions. Over 40 user-generated videos. Over 150 blogs. Five large Facebook communities. 12 music festivals. Four poetry and literature festivals. And one new hope for peace. Most importantly, the reopening of talks between the two governments has further boosted the power of the people's voice over the compulsions of the state. Yeah, agree. Yeah. So it is. It is what it is. So sometimes you you know get like I always like to say you can't choose your relatives and your clients. So sometimes a client wants to do something, you try to do the best you can with all the sincerity you can muster. Uh, even within the agency, there was divided opinion on whether we should do the campaign or not. But once we decided to do it, we decided to give it our creative uh, best. I think next are two films for Airtel. Uh, there were many films, but I just put two in this series, which they were giving out videos for one rupee so that people would start getting used to using the internet on their phone. And like with a lot of the creative, I tend to try to go out of the space in which the brief uh, has operated. So when you say video for one rupee, one would creatively all, already start thinking about 
what can the video do can we show one rupee can we show a situation where of usage where somebody has only one rupee in their pocket and has no network and therefore only with one rupee they see a video but i said if we get out of that and say in life what do we use one rupee for it's hardly actually anything but there are still occasions on which we use one rupee and if we substituted that with a video it could make a hilarious series of commercials so there were four or five there are two here you can play them which shows the use of one rupee in life substituted with a video so play the next two commercials acha acha stop visiting shagun ka 1 rupya nahi rakha ha marungi chalo congratulations congratulations शगुन का है एक रुपए का ही है देखो वीडियोस एक रुपए में फाइव टू जीरो वन जीरो पे कॉल करो क्लिक करो चूज करो एंजॉय करो एक रुपए में सुपर हिट टूट नहीं रहा है क्या अरे तोड़ कौन रहा है यार एक रुपया फंस गया मेरा ना यार एक ही रुपया तो है अच्छा एक ही रुपया है चल तू दे 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 मनुष्य को गुस्सा क्यों आता है ये क्या है बाबा जी का वीडियो एक ही रुपए का है देखो वीडियोस एक रुपए में फाइव टू जीरो वन जीरो पे कॉल करो क्लिक करो चूज करो एंजॉय करो एक रुपए में शांति Bajaj Caliber, uh, done very early on in my career. Uh, interesting brief because uh, they said that you know most brands do communication and advertising for winners, but in real life nobody really wins that much. Most people lose, and there are only few winners. Yet there's no com- communication or campaign done that for losers. So the idea was to glorify the struggle of somebody who loses, and to glorify the sweat and hard work that goes into somebody coming second and third which is a very rare thing like mostly right from nike to everybody talks about winners yet it was a four stroke bike and it was not for the people who went very fast but the people who you know did their job every day and we thought it would be a good idea to glorify the struggle uh, of the losers uh, we could do it with copy we could do it with visuals and the loser is a guy who actually stands up for what he believes in uh, even though he may not be as big as the next guy So there are three press ads here. Uh, I don't know whether we have time to read the copy, but I'll read one. Uh, it said, "I like gut. I like odds. They help me get even. Success has no land address, no landmark, no calling card. But the path is steep, and some will take the elevator, but I will take the stairs. Some will get there faster, but I will get there stronger. And adversity will be my traveling companion, because when I get there, I can turn to adversity and say, 'So long.'" and heave the bag of taunts and insults i gathered along the way and scatter them to the birds i will miss them but feel lighter yes that will be the day when i stand at a large bay window and unclench my fist for there will be no more odds to conquer not even in the mind so similar copy which talked about losing and actually how it is important to stay up even when you lose so like a headline like this the more i sweat the more i shine i am not a star there's no halo over my head fate doesn't like the color of my eyes struggle and strife are old friends of mine who am i i am survival i am guts i am pride i like odds especially when they are stacked against me because there will come a time when i will stare them in the eye and smile the smile of the one who has pulled it off i am the guy who will have deep lines on his face some day and it will make me good when i laugh because that is the day i will fear no fear and taste sweat that is sweet and look back for the very first time and say i did it my way the long hard way So I won't read everyone. Uh, there's one more, I think. Yeah, the most uh, memorable part of the is the waistline, the the unshakable. I think that was yeah. uh, iconic. I think. Maybe. Yes, the unshakable. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah. Uh, so, so he's the guy who actually hardly uh, many often I during my my three four days of interaction regarding this uh, presentation, many often I think he forget his own work. I think that much of the body of work he has done. and some of the iconic work i think he uh, has probably i mean so many uh, work which are probably gone uh, at that level and i think he's uh, forgotten a couple of them so i think that's the genius of him or that's the whatever you know so i think yeah 
yeah i i do tend to forget actually now even now as i'm presenting i'm saying oh there were three more films in this there were two more in that and there were but uh, you know if i would sit like that i would not remember but it's not because i've done too much work it's because i have like bad memory uh, one of the great things about this campaign was that it's it was probably with the ultimate award anybody could get which is not really an award but there was a auto show and the client asked for pulls of this ad and they sold the pulls because people were buying the pulls i think they sold it for 100 rupees each or something and they used to put them up on posters so for me that was bigger than any award that people actually yeah. buying to pay, paying to for your advertising so pulls for your knowledge it is a poster equivalent yeah so printouts basically yeah, so they were selling the printouts of the ad yeah so i'll play the film yeah found him and searched him because he thought his voice was yeah good. it's super but i was always uh, fascinated by the idea of somebody who can show he's strong without doing anything yeah. in fact uh, there was one more ad where there's a wife and he yes, reaches, Vidya Balan, very so, good huh, very beautiful yeah, the army man comes home and he's called correct. back to the front yeah. okay good yeah. yeah lux yeah so this is a single press ad because i just wanted to break the flow of television again uh, a boring brief extra moisturizer and a soap but i think the art director did a tremendous job where you know he just dramatized the fact that your hands can be moist without actually showing moist moist hands or showing water by just simply putting a fish in mid air so mm-hmm. it's 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 an ad that i really like a lot uh, even though it didn't run too much but it's Ghoral. a simple way sorry what goral did the art direction i can't remember yeah goral goral ha tha okay <laughs> somebody did it yeah okay no problem And yeah so uh, the next three ads i know for sure goral did it was a black soap and uh, bilux and we wanted to communicate that it had the uh, essence of a put of of a stronger floral essence but yet the drama of a black soap and i think it's all kudos to the art director who brought it out so well by just showing you know imagine the client brief you have to show skin you have to show body you have to get the dark the dark drama of black and we have to say floral So if you see these are actually people, they are women. Their bodies are arranged in a way like a flower. Lux Pro picture with fragrance. Yeah. The board. There are three ads in this. They all, I mean, uh, right now they may be small on your screen, but they actually all uh, human yeah. bodies. Figures, yeah, human yeah. bodies. even the smallest part which you see in the tentac uh, that uh, yes yeah they're all uh, body bodies actually uh, this was goral's yes. yeah hey tell fuji the uh, this <laughs> i'm often accused of launching sasha who's the model on this ad onto the unsuspecting public of india but i had actually just chosen her for one ad and later on it she was so successful she was used maybe overused by etel in such a way with so many films over the next 3 or 4 years that she it became a case of too much in your face but this was the ad that launched her uh, again an example of you know uh, because the, the brief was very simple that they wanted to say it is faster and they wanted to show a demo and i think that whenever i am faced with this question of showing a plain old boring demo i try and make it as dramatic as possible so if the client says that we did a test of 4g in our outlet in hyderabad and the and our phone our network was actually faster than the other why don't we just 
shoot that and show it because that actually shows because I said nobody will believe you because they say it's staged and it's boring to watch. So the client said, okay, this is what I want to show. I want to show that it's faster than the other. I want to show a real life test of fast. Now, whatever creative you want to do around that, you do, but this has to be there. And therefore, I created this format of an impromptu contest between two teenagers. I think on the last day before the pre-prod, I decided to make them two girls and in fact, not two boys, which it was originally. And therefore, it turned out to be two girls and you know, Sasha was a model. I chose her, not knowing that she would become the tsunami of the next four or five years with maybe more than 300 commercials now where you know, all the competitors use the Prime Minister in the ad or Shah Rukh Khan and all. Etel just keeps using this girl. But this was the ad that launched it. And uh, I thought it was a good idea, good example of making a boring demo seem interesting. Network ready? It is going to start. Three, two, one. Lucknow station. Lucknow station. Video call. Sing, sing. Hi, Teju. We'll call you back, okay? Bingo. MBA Colleges. Top 10. Upper, upper. How's the network? This network is here. Okay. Photo album upload. Got it. Honey Singh. Got it. Coke Studio. Got it. Full movie download. It's too fast. कुछ गड़बड़ है. गड़बड़ नहीं. 4G है. Airtel 4G challenge. इससे faster network मिले तो lifetime mobile bills free. Who's the music guy? I think it's a nice release. Samir was in, yeah. But I'd given him, for most music, I do give a reference. Hmm. Uh, even for our friend Zaruri, in fact, I told uh, Ram Sampath that it has to look like they're playing a song and not a jingle. So the difference between hmm. a song and a jingle is jingle looks like it's been put by the marketeer or the agency hmm. on the top of a film. And a song looks like it's part, of, it's an organic part of the film inside, hmm. the, inside the acting if they're playing it. Correct. So it's it's a very subtle difference, but I told I gave Ram a list of things he can use uh, for that yeah. her friend Zaruri song, which yeah. was table banging, books banging, collapse, even <laughs> banging on your chest or shoulder, dustbin, ruler. Ke hi karna hai because and I had given him a reference of a Michael Jackson song called All I Want to Say Is They Just Don't Care About Us, which was done only with percussion on the streets of Brazil. And I said, yeah. Can we do it only with this? And uh, he accepted the challenge and delivered that. In this case, uh, I wanted uh, a bit of a Latin feel to it because I thought it would it would add some kind of musty to the terrace. Otherwise, it's, yeah. it's pretty grimy and dark. And that yeah. was the reason why I changed the protagonist from male to female, not knowing what would happen in the years that followed, that it would make the whole thing lighter. Otherwise, it was becoming too tough and hard a competition to be believable for just two mobile phones. Latin and Arabic, I think, is a little because I think yeah, yeah. Balkan beatbox is the Arabic. is the band that we referred, but yeah. it's not there. Nice, nice. Shindla, yeah. Shindla is a simple press campaign. They said our elevator is like any other elevator in India. The only difference is, uh, you know, uh, Otis is uh, from wherever it is. We are Swiss. So if we can, if we can, uh, in a print campaign, leverage the fact that we are Swiss. Maybe we can try and do something. So Vikram Gaikwad and me came up with this idea of using the up-down buttons on the elevator mm. uh, and using Swiss perfection to depict it. And all it said, the, the world's fi finest elevators also come from Switzerland. The, when Vikram was in Burnett, yeah. In Burnett, yes. Mm. I, yeah. Mm. So it's, it's very simple to say the world's finest elevators also come from Switzerland because the triangular up-down buttons of the elevator lent themselves to many iconic Swiss symbols. In this case, it was Swiss cheese. In the next one, it's Swiss knife. In the next one, it may be, I think, the Swiss watch. Yeah. Correct. Link. Okay, sorry. The next one is a film. Uh, 
this was for airtel wink uh, again uh, largely a me too product uh, plays you a lot of songs plays you every genre of songs lifts your mood you know we, this could be a brief for gana.com it could be a brief for any music app uh, so I, i was thinking how to make this different rather than just show somebody and of course we have to show somebody listening to music and so i said uh, to myself that you know normally we see uh, one band or one performer and we see a large crowd in a hall or in a stadium listening to that what if we substitute that and reverse it where there is only one listener and only one person wanting to listen to the music and the entire stadium or the entire crowd or the entire hall are all musicians so therefore it's almost like bringing alive or you know humanizing the data inside your phone that is playing all this music at every touch and therefore all the genres of music we have to write songs for each of them and you'll see it now as you play where we simply reverse the number of people listening which is in this case one and normally a huge crowd listens and the number of musicians which is in other cases it's one or two or three and in this case the entire audience is our musicians so you can can you play the next one Of course I'm upset yeah Tanya but listen bye Samir Udin, hmm. but uh, there were so many people asking us for you know, can you give us the third song or the fifth song? But <laughs> we didn't really have the songs. We just created that much, you know, write hmm. something and do it. So I spent a lot of time in the recording studio. I I really I don't think I've ever in maybe five six hundred films not gone into the recording studio because I feel I can control or change or save a lot of things that are going wrong there uh, hmm. at that point. And I I I don't just go back to hear the track. I just sit with them. in silence while they are doing their stuff because sometimes somebody something strikes them and they ask me something and that leads to something else so i know musicians well because i think they can actually become your safety net uh, very often 
you you are one six one six hundred time uh, when you went i think i met you in <laughs> this sounds good <laughs> yeah yeah okay yeah mumbai mirror uh, okay we are in mumbai so uh, mumbai mirror the interesting campaign uh, they came to us and said you know we do uh, coverage of stories in the mumbai mirror which are actually uh, expose stories about the city which do not get coverage in national news and we want to do a series of films that show these stories so you know we'll give you a list of stories and you just show them so i said it will be documentary style it may not be very interesting to watch uh, so uh, we thought for some time in the office and we went back to them with this strategy and we said look there are two parts one is the tone of voice and one is the concept the concept is very simple you highlight issues that do not get coverage in a national newspaper but still are crimes and they need to be highlighted but it's only for the city so mumbai mirror will do that so mumbai mirror in a way and this was the key line amplifies the voice of people who would not, otherwise not have a voice in national media correct so it brings it to you every morning these people who would otherwise go unseen because if 100 people die uh of something it makes the national news if two people die it does not make the national news it comes in the mumbai mirror but for those two people a death is a complete death it's 100% death it's not a lesser death just that it happened only to two people for them it's 200% each so therefore if you, if you amplify the voice of the unheard in the newspaper then every morning when this paper comes in your door it slipped in your door it brings to you uh, victims who would otherwise never have been heard so let's tell all these stories from the point of view of the victim and we are not going to dramatize and shoot documentary style of the footage of of the reporting you did we are just going to make these people announce their plea or their uh, helplessness to the city so that is first part the second part is the tone of voice i said it's a paper that every morning disturbs you so let's make it disturbing and a lot of people have asked me why this is so strong why is it so aggressive why that's so graphic can't it couldn't have been toned down and i said no since we are going all the way let's go all the way and let's make it a disturbing uh, the, the film was shot much before the print campaign was done i want people to feel disturbed because i feel that when the paper comes into my house every morning i'm having my uh, or somebody's having their corn flakes and whatever else they have for breakfast and everything nice and going on well in times of india and hindustan times Here's this small paper which comes and tells you something really wrong, which disturbs you. So let's make it a disturbing campaign. So this is the second part. The third part, which is one of the biggest risks I've taken in my career, and not many people know this, is when we went on ground to shoot, we decided to shoot black and white. So I told the client that we may shoot black and white in color, and everybody knows that when you shoot, you shoot in color, and then you make it black and white if the client does not like it, then you can change it and put color in. But we actually shot in black and white. So if the client would ask us. to put show a version in color or try to put some color we would not have it there is no color uh, i mean it's shot in you know, karthik shot it and he shot it in what is called native black and white and we did this without telling the client so uh, mumbai mirror is also a tabloid format it's a smaller format than a larger one and i remember when i used to travel by train in bombay a lot and i used to see people uh, holding that pole uh, where they stand at the door of the train uh, you could not do that if you had a times of india or an indian express in your hand because the larger size of the broadsheet when it's folded would not allow you to hold the paper and the pole together because the pole was that thick but with a midday or any tabloid you could do that and i remember that because uh, you know it was always said that don't take a thick paper and sand it because it's it's not thick enough for your hand to hold so that became my pack shot and that started the iconic trend of uh, you know uh, great pack shots for mumbai mirror where we just don't show the paper but we'll show it in some a situation which makes it memorable to watch and of course then ram sampath added the train sound at the end which made it memorable i think it won gold for direction in can and even in can i remember a lot of people were shaken up by it and some people were asking why it was so aggressive but uh, it started by simply saying we want to show five stories from the paper and these are the actual five stories but we made them uh, give people megaphones and said if these people who are victims of these stories came to your house and shouted at you saying what is going wrong is with them and with society that is what the paper does metaphorically and that's that's why that's the film they burned my book they burned my book they burned my word 
But I will never be able to silence my voice. Never! I am Mumbai! I am Mumbai! the second one uh so sorry yeah. i just wanted yeah. to say yeah. about the second sure, sure. one they, sure, sure. they came the next day and they said oh this is a very successful campaign everybody likes it let's do one in fact it was for a long time it was you know uh, in the times of india how it was probably more powerful than the main paper campaign and it made the people in mumbai may really feel up to that so when they said we'll do another one next day i said i can't just do repeat the same thing because you will just say you're just making more and more stories so i just changed a very simple thing i changed the point of view that this was the point of view of the victims what if we make a point of view of the villains so a villain the villains of the same piece i mean the newer stories they would hate the mumbai mirror right because mumbai mirror is doing making their lives miserable by bringing all these things out so the more they hate the paper the better job we are doing and therefore was born the campaign that was hated by some in fact i thought it was more powerful than the first one because it's very rare for a brand to go out and do a campaign that says how much we are hated and make that a virtue and therefore we made a campaign called hated by some and another uh, iconic pack shot which was not the train but so hated that they actually insult the baseline of the first campaign in fact spit at the baseline of the first campaign and in the end burn the paper and that actually brings out the brand even stronger so you can play the next one देख देख कैसा मार रहा है कुत्ते जैसा मार है रे ऐसा मारता है क्या कोई कभी बेटियों की तरह पाला इनको देख देख इस बेचारी को आजकल टाइम ऐसा आ गया साहब कि मरीज लोगों का जान बचाना भी पाप हो गया एक कॉन्ट्रैक्ट के लिए सभी हाथ धो के जान के पीछे पड़ गए लेकिन मेरे को समझ में नहीं आया कि हम लोगों ने क्या किया है थोड़ा लीवर और किडनी का तो धंधा किया है धंधा करते हैं हम धंधा लेकिन ये न्यूज पेपर वालों से देखा नहीं जाता ना अरे होता है बाबा थोड़ा कभी कभी गर्मी चढ़ती है इधर उधर लेडीज लोग को देख के थोड़ा हाथ घुमा दिया तो क्या इतना क्या उसमें और फिर माल तो माल है ना चाहे बाक्स में पैक हो कर आई या फिर साड़ी में अब कहते क्या है की पूरे प्लेटफॉर्म का हाइट बढ़ाओ अब इसमें नुकसान किसका मेरा ना अब क्या फर्क पड़ता है अगर ये चौदह पंद्रह साल की है तो वैसे भी ऊपर वाले ने दो दो दिए है एक स्टेपनी तो जरा पब्लिक में बांट दिया तो रिपोर्टर के पेट में क्या के लिए दुखता है अरे इतना सा गैप है इतना जब नहीं मार सकते का थोड़ा वो मॉले स्टेशन फॉले स्टेशन इतना चलता है रेप तो नहीं किया ना भाई मैंने लड़की है ये कोई मदर इंडिया नहीं अरे चलो माना कि पैसा लेते हैं पर ये तो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन का बिजनेस है ना इसमें लीगल और इनलीगल क्या है मानता हूँ की कभी चढ़ते उतरते हाथ पाँव कट गए या टूट गए तो क्या हाथ जोड़ के सॉरी बोलता हूँ रे बाबा हाँ शुरू में थोड़ी जबरदस्ती होती है लेकिन बाद में सब सेटल होता है ना लेकिन इनकी में खुश लिया पेपर में न्यूज छापते साले इस साल पेपर ने मेरे पूरा धंधा चौपट करके रख दिया हाय लगेगी मेरी देख लेना 
मैं हूँ मुंबई आई एम मुंबई मैं हूँ मुंबई मैं हूँ मुंबई क्या मुंबई मुंबई रे नहीं है मैं मुंबई जा तू it's iconic yeah so it's it's quite i mean if you tell somebody can you do a brand about how much the brand is can you do a campaign about how much the brand is hated uh, it's quite a yeah strange thing to say but that's what we did and that's what the client bought thankfully uh -huh. yeah so a series of press ads this was for compliant way early on in my career and i thought the simple uh, at that time i stumbled upon a simple truth in, in the days of low copy or no copy advertising that when you want to exaggerate something in print you either show the results of it or you show the precautions of it or you know something you have to do because you are going to use this brand or something that happens because you are going to use this brand and therefore if something negative happens because of the positive of the brand that negative makes for a far more engaging visual so this brand is so good that it can cause a problem and there were i mean there were three or four of us who worked on these ads uh, one of them one was me one was a guy called gokul one was ramnakar and uh, this was the result so just press ads that simply tell a back story about what must have happened because this, these people used compliant you can show them extra growing power so simple you know don't worry about the headline just visualize the headline don't worry about the line just visualize the headline the client is happy that the brand line is there but you've taken it to another place in the visuals very insightful extra growing power papa bear mama bear baby bear is everybody been said yeah so just in case we think insights can be there only in films yeah conqueror conqueror i think paddy is covered it was 25 yeah. years of conqueror paper in india it's a basically a craft based campaign where we created iconic images of india using rolled up uh, rolled up kind of bundles of the paper itself so if you go close up you can actually see they just rolled up stubs of the of the paper being produced so it's it's a it's a portrait made out of the product mm. yeah uh, the, the next one is something i stumbled upon uh, uh, while going through some stock pictures and it was about female infanticide which i always used to feel very bad about and i thought this was this is a real picture so it's 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 not a it's not a short picture but i thought it was something that would be worthwhile making it dramatic which is what will it take for female infanticide to make it to the front page because it was always the small kind of articles inside that a bodies you found here or a fetus is found there but never a big enough issue together i can't read the copy now so i can't remember it but Uh, i th i think it is the whole copy is about getting people to talk about it a bit more and bring it to the front page headlines rather than these small city highlights that come on the second page that some fetus has been thrown in a garbage dump and this is a real picture yeah so the rest are press ads very simple uh, and i'm trying to keep the mood from jumping from dark to light so you know we all know the iconic image of jazz players when they blow the trumpet the their cheeks blow out with the oxygen and this was a monsoon festival for a jazz fest so it's straight off stock picture visual the monsoon jazz brunch from september 1st and you, it has it talks about jazz it talks about monsoon it talks about everything in a single shot yeah and the same with the next one which is a uh, video gone dog which is extra drying power in the washing machine a washing machine that dries better so you know you just try and dram dramatize it with a different visual than the category which would normally just show clothes and this this shows the same makes the same point in a far more interesting manner the condom ads which are which coming next were two of my early ads and uh, they were done for uh, uh, a client called bombay dost and i i was always intrigued by the idea that actually for aids it's actually an entire circular movement so i wanted to write a headline that you can start anywhere and end in end anywhere and you can keep on reading it actually it's a never ending headline so if you read from the top it says the more sex you, uh, sorry the longer you live the more sex you can have the more sex you have the more condoms you use the more condoms you use the longer you live 
the longer you live the more sex you can have so it's a never ending headline you can start anywhere you can end anywhere and you can never really end it you can keep reading it on and on so i used to call it the circle of life because it just made absolute completely uh, mathematical sense that both support each other so we should use a condom yeah somebody, really, sorry what? no i just i think when leo burnett was chaitra <laughs> yes yes in those days i think it may have been one of their first one show finally yeah then somebody said but you know what of people can't read can you write a headline in one word so i said remember many years later i thought that i should have not even put the word remember but that is today in a more literate audience at that time we already want always wanted to play safe saying there may be some people who don't know what this means you know tying a knot around your finger to to remember so better write the word uh, i think we are now moving on to the teach india case the teach india case was a teaching platform a kind of aggregation of all the uh, uh, vocational uh, ngos in india calling for people to come and teach uh, kids it was the year after lead india it is probably out of all the times of india campaigns that have done the longest running campaign it still runs even now uh, I, i i wrote a line for it called very simply let's learn to teach and it was meant for people who say we don't know how to teach so and even if we knew how to teach we don't know where to go and teach and we don't know when to go and teach i don't know when i'll be free so the platform came and said you tell us when you'll be free we'll organize a class for you that day you tell us where you stay we'll organize a place close enough for you to teach and you tell us what you want to teach we'll organize a class that needs that teaching so it was a mass literacy campaign which even runs even now and this again is a case study which has the ads and the films and the print ads all inside it so can you play in this classroom 2 is greater than 2 let me explain It's a drama that plays out every morning. A car stops at a red light. A tear-streaked face is pressed against your car window. You try to look away for a moment, but soon give in and reach for the go away button. The go away button is a shiny 2 rupee coin that you keep handy for conscience cleansing moments like these. A quick fix option that makes you feel good for the next 2 hours. The Teach India initiative asks for precisely 2 hours of your time. You'll find them wastefully strewn around coffee shops, smoking areas, traffic jams, oh, and most often in front of TV sets. Give them to us. Those 2 hours that you casually toss aside on a whim, and you'll see how they could give that shiny-eyed flower girl a shot at changing her family's destiny forever. Do you have to do this? You don't. Should you do it? Well, let's just say that you have two choices, and one is clearly greater than the other. Millions of children in India go to school every morning, but there are 75 million children who don't. That's because 250,000 children are born every day in this country. but there aren't enough teachers it's a situation rich in irony a country that boasts some of the brightest most educated people in the world is also home to so many uneducated children so the times of india had an idea to bring the two together an idea that became the largest educational program in the world on 6 july 2008 the times of india released a full page ad on its front page It was a simple powerful thought bring together people who could teach and those who wanted to learn
the idea was also carried forward to print. The response was tremendous. Barely two weeks into the campaign and more than 10,000 people had signed up for the cause. We've repeatedly urged people to take time out of their busy lives and give some kids a shot at a better future. So profound was its impact that Amir Khan, a Bollywood star, offered to be a part of the campaign, free of charge. I think that in, in a program like this, where, which invites uh, people like us to take part in a small way in getting involved in the process of education, in actually teaching children uh, for a few days, for a few weeks, uh, will go a long way in sensitizing us. <laughs> but I'm not a teacher. Eh? So, so how can I teach now? What if all the kids laugh at me? Of course, I want to give back something, but I'm not sure I can make them receive. In fact, I don't even know how to spell receive. Ah. I prefer an E, except after a C. <laughs> That's what my teacher used to say. Thank you, teacher. Two hours, that's all we asked for. And as the volunteers kept streaming in, the question, what can I do, gradually changed to, what more can I do? We ask principals to help us out by giving us classrooms and students to teach. If you say I educated a child, no. Did I open his eyes to wanting to learn? The advertising was supported by on-ground activities, an outdoor and ambient campaign, and massive press coverage. Today there are classrooms in over 60 of India's leading NGOs and at times on street corners and playgrounds. Some volunteers are even conducting classes in their own houses. We hope that this campaign will be more successful and we hope that not just 1,000 but maybe 2,000 people are willing and able and wanting to come in with us and work with us. It did a lot better than she anticipated. In fact, it did a lot better than all of us expected it to. At last count, over 90,000 Indians had stepped up to become teachers, making this the largest, most ambitious educational initiative in history. You could say, this class has just begun. <laughs> So due to uh, paucity of time, what we will do is, uh, Aggie, I think we will um, go a little faster on the, uh, so I mean, some of the great ads, we will just go to uh, uh, the one of the two most iconic uh, films, I think, uh, which Aggie has done in his career. I think he'll talk about it. So this was uh, popularly known as Pakya. Uh, it was a brief for the Times of India, completing a certain number of years in India. Uh, they wanted to say that they've been in India for so long, uh, 175 years. One important part of the brief is they said, we want to open the film with a shot of the newspaper. So if you can't start with a shot of the newspaper, you don't write a story. So I started thinking and saying, what story can I write where a newspaper is there in the front first shot? It doesn't have to be a close up, but it has to be there in the shot. And, uh, and that morning I saw in the newspapers, uh, you know, the classified ads and I saw an obituary ad where somebody was, had died. And a, both ad next to each other. And I was thinking that in this small space, right next to each other, somebody in India is celebrating and somebody in India is mourning. But yet in the paper, and only in the paper can it be confined in a small two inch by two inch space, both these extremes of emotion. And it's called the Chaplinist graph, where you go from you know, an extreme uh, comedic situation to an extremely sad situation. 
uh, and this is a, a fast jump between these is always uh, unnerves or catches the viewer off guard raj kapoor tried it many times late many years later so i said tragedy and uh, ecstasy of something happening good and something happening bad if they were just supposed to gather across a large period of time say many years would make for a good good story and i started writing this back story of this person who was dropped from the hockey team and finally there's redemption because his grandson gets picked in the hockey team so there are one or two shots which are important to talk about in this because the foot curling shot was put later on during the shoot and so was the you know the last broken shot at the end to show that this boy must have played here when he was younger but otherwise it's it's a it's as straight a story as you can get it could have easily been a long uh, you know half an hour film if you wanted but it it's woven the brand in i thought very smoothly without you realizing that a brand is being ad- advertised so can you just play mm. again iconic i mean everybody would yeah so uh, i mean nike is a straight off brief uh, uh, i think uh, nike has a point of view of every sport in any part of the world so we can just forward this because there's yeah. no time now yeah and uh, even this yeah so so coke will add bubble add any fine mm-hmm. not even this yet so uh, uh, you know the the whole idea we went with is you know cricket was meant to be a gentleman's game played in whites on the lawns of england with people eating sandwiches at tea time but in india it's become almost like rugby it's a rough game played on the streets with people going for each other's throats so i wanted to bring out that passion and that raw energy of cricket the way it's played in the streets of india because the way cricket is played in the streets of india is a different sport from the cricket that came from india the two different sports and nobody shows this difference they either show cute kids or they show sports stars so i wrote this ad across i had first written it across terraces of buildings they were playing across terraces of buildings but then it was thought it would be too dangerous and not allowed to run so i moved it on the top of traffic and at that time i think happy dent prasoon had done and i was feeling that there was too much sufi and punjabi music on the advertising scene i wanted to represent another part of india so that it feels fresher so i wrote a go and konkani I rewrote a very popular, iconic, famous Go and Konkani song, which already existed. I rewrote it for the film, and when it went to the Nike headquarters, they said you can't use a Portuguese song, you can't use a Brazilian song, you use an Indian song. And I said, but this is an Indian song. This is a part of India. It's a state called Goa. Then I had to send them stuff about Goa, and then they agreed to run it. But that gave the film a freshness and an energy that would not have come with the 
the classic way of doing it with you know proper punjabi bhangra music or you know sufi music or rajasthani music it just made it lift out that much and it it showed the way the game is played with so much passion in the country you know where you know most of these cricketers feel that if if they had the better break in life they could have been better than you know kohli or bumrah they are that close and that in later years proved proved profitic with the ipl actually so can you play Sorry, I think we have run out of time. Actually, yeah, I think this is maybe about fifty percent of. of I, I had a five TB hard drive which conked off, and I couldn't open it. So all that work I couldn't get. But I think this is enough for today. Yeah. So some uh, questions uh, which we uh, gathered from the thing, and then we'll also open up to the people. So yeah, we'll start with the first question, uh, Kunal. so which are the writers from copy book you admire the most and why copy book is one of the uh, world's most uh, classic compilation of the copywriters from across the world so probably uh, uh, let's take an opportunity agi being one of the ace copywriter of this country i think probably let's ask him wh- whom he admires basically there, there are the obvious superstars like david abbott and the french but uh, there are two or three others that i like i I mean, obvi- they are all above a certain standard, so yeah. it's a question of choosing between the first among equals. But so it's better to choose what I personally like is guys like Michael Sardou and Ted Sullivan and many of these guys because they work on Parker pens and uh, Bob Levinson and Volkswagen. It, it is work that we, I don't think it can be better even today. For me, timeless work is you know sometimes you see work that was a big hit at that time and you see it today and it's not good, but you know that at that time it was a hit. but you you give it that kind of grace marks because it it was in that era it was a hit and today it's not but some of these ads are good even today even if you release it today it would be the best ad and that is a classic so yeah. that's why i like some of these guys because it's everlasting the work they do mm. so lescargo and the uh, and bob levinson is one of those yeah, yeah. okay alfredo macantonio yeah, yeah. anyway Okay, uh, you quoted somewhere that that uh, you are highly inspired by some of the uh, Indian writers like Muhammad Khan, Chris Rosario, Frank Simons, um, Alok Nanda, K S Gopal. So, can you explain what trait, style, or the work of theirs inspired you so much? In in almost all of them, uh, Alok and you know Mr. Khan and 
all of them uh, what i so like and what i like about the power of print that it's able to slip in a selling pitch about a product without you realizing it they don't have they don't you know good writing in in copy when these guys write you don't realize that you're being sold a product or it's virtue or it's merit you think you're just reading something good that you're interested in and by the time you realize that you know you're positively disposed to the product you're almost to the end of the ad and that's a rare skill in in writing if you pull off something there you can sell somebody a point of view or an argument or a, a plus point about something or you know convince them about something without them realizing that they are being sold so mm-hmm. that is common with all good writers and with these okay uh, next question is that uh, do you find similarities in approach in craft of copywriting and in craft of art direction or a visualization or graphic design because i think there are lots of students who uh, registered for from the art colleges or a design colleges so maybe it will help them if you can just yes. draw a parallel so first you must understand the difference between art and craft okay craft chases excellence it takes something that has been done and it tries to perfect it so musicians playing in an in a in an orchestra you know they are practicing a craft they are not creating the music art is creating something out of nothing okay so a person carving a certain statue to absolute perfection the same statue again and again for 100 years it's craft he cannot carve something else but he's the best carver of that particular statue that he ever was so similarly in advertising it's very important to understand that there are various creative languages in the world okay i'm going to take 2 minutes to explain this because this is important for students okay creative is a force within each of us sometimes people have more of it some people have less of it but it's there in every human being it's there in my mother it's there in your watchman it's there in everyone now for this creative to be expressed there are certain languages that have been invented okay like literature like music like painting like sculpture like photography like theater now all of these are languages that express this creative and just like in the normal spoken language when you have a phrase or a line in malayalam when you translate it to another language you will understand it but it will not have the magic of its original similarly a creative force or energy expressed best in sculpture cannot be expressed in a book as well it can be expressed but not as well as it is in original so if a person who has a strong creative force learns in his lifetime one of the languages in which to express this which it best matches then you have a genius you have mozart we don't know which it will be correct right? so each of these each of these languages has their own dogma and own grammar it cannot be mixed you cannot say a piece of poetry is a sculpture you cannot say a sculpture is a song or a piece of music you cannot say a piece of music is actually a sketch they, they cannot be it is different However, advertising uses all of this. There is nothing that is not an ad. You can use theater, you can use street play, you can use writing, you can use photography, you can use sculpture, you can use architecture. Nobody will say, but this is not advertising. You can use any any of these languages of creative, and that is the the great power and the great uh, responsibility we have because you can easily go wrong because everything is available to you, and therefore you can go wrong because you may use the wrong one as well. A sculpture. a sculptor will never go wrong or an artist or a painter or a photographer like prashant will never go wrong because he can't use music in it. he has to take a picture okay even if music is playing even the music is better he has to try and take a picture but as advertising guys we are in a way scientists or and we practice one of them because that helps us give our bread and butter so one of us may be a writer one of us may be an artist one may be a photographer but as an advertising professional okay whether you are doing a layout on or, or doing an ad your job is to communicate a point of view about the brand in the most engaging manner possible now in a layout where there is a start and a finish and you know what to put where you may say i am not using a photograph i am not even using typography but it's a big decision as an artist to say i am not going to use this it doesn't mean that you are not you are not a good uh, you know uh, art person because you have not used anything you have taken the decision to not use any or you have you can take the decision to use everything or you can take the decision to use one of this and half of the other you know part picture part typography so these decisions make you a creative communicator one of them may be your favorite you may be your passion may be maybe you know sketching but that doesn't mean you use sketch to communicate everything 
so i hope i like answered in some way this yes yes i think uh, uh, they they will realize the answer uh, after having some years career but i think they'll get at least a uh, they'll get provoked to uh, think in this direction i think that much is good enough for the yeah uh, because yeah if if somebody comes to a, a specialist and say i want to look good in life i want to have a good personality if his brother in law in the house and is a tailor he can't keep saying you know he keeps stitching new clothes he'll have to say go to the gym look better have a new haircut it doesn't matter that my brother in law is a tailor right so all of these creative languages are at your disposal your personal passion may be one of them it's like a good captain just because he's a batsman he won't only say keep batting better he has to think about the bowler think about the folder fielder and about the batsman and he has to also bat as a batsman yeah. uh, the next question is that do you find differences between writing for an ad writing for design like then when you design write for a brochure or a um, you know any other uh, like a calendar or whatever uh, the design piece or you write for a music like how, how you wrote for uh, uh, the nike song or yeah. any of those other things or are you writing for film what are the basic differences in approaches i think if you can just help them understanding this so i i mean the first simple job is to try and imagine the person receiving it okay if he is uh, going to be reading it then i try to read it i don't read it out aloud because with the spoken word you may you know when you write something and you read it you will read it in a particular way but you may never say those things because if you say it you may sound theatrical or funny but you know you're okay to read it you know you know okay to write it to somebody as a letter but if you that's why when we write something and we send in a mail and when we talk to the same person it's different right we don't talk like what we've written in the mail and we don't uh, write in the mail the way we talk so you try and imagine the person receiving it if it if it's film then i try and imagine the emotion of the person receiving it you know is it too rushed is it is he feeling happy is he going to say this is stupid is he going to say aisa kaun baat karta hai nobody talks like this i don't have to think about all this when writing because nobody will say nobody talks like this of course he is going to be reading so there is a subtle difference it's not uh, very difficult if you imagine the person receiving if a person is reading a brochure or design then you are writing for him in alignment with what design he is reading not by in isolation like copy right when i write for a song for example i am writing for the visuals for the film to make that come alive so if you take the nike song i wanted it to be hyper energetic and that's why it's written like that if you take the her friend zaruri song uh, when i wrote the refrain and most of it i wanted to be slightly anthemic but not so anthemic that it becomes heavy and i'll stand up and sing the janakana mana it should be the brief for me for writing it and for ram sampath was picnic song picnic songs are anthems but they are not heavy there are only some songs we sing together at a picnic we don't sing all songs some songs we sing alone yeah um yeah so while you written so much for communication like for i mean as a professional uh in advertising uh how about have you written like haiku or an essay or a diary or even a terribly tiny tale anything of those have you written like that do you want I, to i uh, for i haven't written because i have always used the excuse i have i been too busy and uh, over the years i have had no time to do all this but uh, now for the last two years i haven't been busy and i still haven't written anything so i come to realize that i'm a deadline junkie i'm driven by fear unless somebody comes and says on this date you have to show this i'll just keep postponing it and maybe i'll try and i'll i'll, I'll try and write something but so far uh, odd year and so their articles you are interestingly uh, contradict Pr- prashant because i think in last session he said that your 80 70% of the work of your life should be uh, self expression and i think it is interesting that um, you have done uh, probably like uh, many of the uh, the great uh, advertising dedicated people probably you've been dedicated your self expression through even uh, communication but probably um, there would be a question and there would be a thing because people start writing probably when the uh, breakups happen or you know they start <laughs> so, so prashant prashant is a genius i am not a genius like you i am a, <laughs> a liberal <laughs> <laughs> somebody gives me a job i try to do it the best i can and uh, maybe now it will change but you can't mm. prashant is in a different uh, 
space mm. altogether nice nice so the uh, another is that because i think a lot of people aspiring to join digital outfits and stuff and uh, digital is in air people say people consume people think talk whatever so what's the because you have started in uh, in a print era and mm. uh, then you lived electronic and then now digital mm. so you would you would understand the difference between the era you started when all the copy book and all those thing we consumed and then now so what is the difference apart from the putting tag words in our sentences what else you will see that it will be different uh, i i i i'll be honest i don't have all the answers so i don't know the answer to this question i don't see it different if you when we write normally we say okay if you're writing for a holding write it short and pithy and maybe you know three words and three sentences because people are moving that fast when they are driving would say the same applies to if you're writing for a format in digital that is going to be surfed through then you write short and pithy there are some places where people come to read a lot you write you know you, you give more expression and more layers to what you're writing there are some which are sensational so you write it like that so most mm. of them what in normal advertising we have a secondary part of the brief called tone of voice mm. if you have tone of voice clear like this is i want people to feel angry i want people to feel puzzled i want people to feel uh, slightly intrigued i want people to be astounded and fall on the floor i want people to feel sad i want people to feel emotional i want people to just be slightly thinking and say hmm maybe point hai so if you once you get this then the writing just follows that would yeah. you feel emotional and say or would you feel slightly perplexed and say ha point hai when you read this if it works for you and for three four other people mostly it's right so media doesn't matter i think the uh, the the tone I, of it, voice matters maybe uh, yeah it it doesn't matter to me as of mm. today as of now but yeah. like i say i don't know all the answers but i have not found what mm. what is the trick in writing for that other than you know yeah. honest simple good writing yeah now this is a long question i'll explain it in a simplest way that uh, as i said study says and even today we can see that you know the so many youngsters glued with our session and it's a contrary uh, that you know um, people say that the the millennials and generation z has no attention span i mean attention basically 8 to 12 seconds and people say that okay also say that you know the people binge watch uh, secret games ka nine uh, netflix pay you know eight episodes together or some of some of these uh, uh, these facebook of the world says that okay there are thumb stopper ads which is in 10 second 6 second to be done and then they themselves make 6 to 7 minutes some of them in been made by you all so uh, we see uh, we used, we used to hear long body see read uh, long body copy ads we used to also have long narration based radio we also have long format films ad films uh, and then uh, then the youth doesn't have time to look at things and then this session itself is long enough and people glued to hear and you know see and watch and all so all these things are contradicting to each other so the simple question is that do what is the truth i mean um, when when do you do, do do you think that what we create or what this kids going to create which is which might be longer or it might be shorter which one gets consumed and if if the longer thing cannot be consumed then why and then can we say like how people used to say sometime back that copy is dead and then then they're saying the long format communication is dead what do we i mean what is there a hope in basically the the, the length matters like the media doesn't matter to you the length matters or what so uh, even even in the days when long copy was there i could never understand the idea of saying let's write long copy today hmm. because to my mind you I, you wrote what was needed to be written and was what needed to be said. When it was over, you checked whether it was long or medium or short. Correct. So, uh, if somebody told me say this and write long copy, I would just have to write three or four different ads and combine them together and make them long. Mm. So, uh, in in the world of today, it is true that attention spans are shorter because I you can find it reflected in yourself, your own attention span is short. Mm. But the some of the compelling long pieces of work. Uh, I didn't show Pooja Didi today, even though it's uh, that Facebook campaign or the last two Facebook campaigns that are pushed because there are new people doing it. But sometimes long works, people watch it and uh, like it and resonate with it. And sometimes it doesn't. So if you take the example of OTT, right? 
the sacred games and all that. The same proportion of hits which people watch, and some are not watched even though they are long form, is the same proportion of engagingness in 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 how much people relate to them as as was the movie. Some movies were flops, some movies were hits. But just because it is OTT doesn't mean all the OTT multi-episodic serials are liked and watched by everybody. Some are good, so people like them, uh, even though they are long, and some are bad, and people don't like them even though they are short. So, if you say people watch, uh, uh, people will they watch a long copy, listen to long copy radio, or watch long copy format and ad? If they are good, they'll watch it. But I guess what clients are now saying that if we have to fail. Then let's fail doing something short. Let's not fail doing something long. Of course, if it works, then everything works, correct? So uh, the unit size of the consumable creative has become smaller because the default option is to do something short, unless you have a compelling reason to do something long. Okay. But otherwise, uh, you know, do average stuff that people don't like and let it be short. So in cricket, it is called. If you're getting out, get out playing a defensive shot. Don't get out playing an attacking. So it's like a test test match versus T uh, twenty, yeah. yeah, and so, both. Are so it depends on the that. confidence. It puts yeah. onus on the creative also yeah. because if it is long and still people don't like it, then it's really bad. <laughs> then you don't even have an excuse to say I didn't have time. Correct. Correct. Uh, I think I would uh, tell Kunal. I think he has picked up one or two questions from the chat. Uh, yeah. uh, so Kunal, over to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So the first question is, uh, so it is about basically, uh, so be it Lead India or Teach India, your idea of advertising has always been about driving change. Awards were always incidental. So how would you inculcate this habit of communicating communication driving change in today's generation, which is driven by fame and awards? So, so first of all, it's a misconception that I choose what kind of campaigns I want to do. Okay, I happen to get many briefs that were needed to for change to be driven. So I didn't say, I mean, I did say let's do a campaign for Teach India, but Lead India was the one that happened organically on its own. After that, every year we used to, you know, sit and say what do we do this year. I think for the for the youth of today, uh, I don't know what message to give them whether they should do something for society or not because I don't know what I would have done at that age. It's very easy for me to sit today and say you should do this, you should do that. But at their their age, even I was struggling to make ends meet and finding out I was not interested in driving driving change. By and by, as I lasted over the years, some some opportunities came my way, and I've done this. And we don't have time today, but there are lots of there is a lot of work I've done which does not drive change. It sells points of view, it sells sells brands, it sells products. It's it, it, if we had time, we would have shown that. So I don't think. That the youth of India today uh, is not interested in driving change, or is irresponsible, or is uh, you know shallow compared to the youth before. At that age, there are too many things and too many options to choose from for you to be focused on one thing. They have a they have in fact they have a bigger dilemma than us because they have too many choices. And one of the reasons why we were called focused was not because we were focused because there was no other choice. So you were forced to be focused. And when by 91, 92, when the economic revolution uh, turned India, we had no choice but to do well. All of us succeeded. So let's not uh, kid ourselves and say you know we were greater than this generation because we did something special. Every generation will find its own, like water find it find its own level. They'll find their own meter and their own mark in the context of today. Correct. So they'll find they may be. Uh, uh, driving change directly through advertising, like campaigns like this, is not. Is not uh, what they will find. They'll find something else on social media. So, I'm I'm not in agreement that I am in a position to give them a point of view. This is what I've shown of what happened in my lifetime. Some of it can happen in your lifetime, and you you're faced with similar circumstances. Please make new mistakes. Don't make the same old mistakes. Make new mistakes. You're safe. Make same mistakes, like they say. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again, expecting a different result. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, I think uh, I think for today, this much is good in terms of uh, uh, basically uh, 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 like a number of questions and and uh, interaction. I think he has given a lot of time. However, I think as a conclusion. Uh, 
uh, uh, you know, Aggie uh, can say a few more things, uh, uh, and I think we can conclude. I think uh, it's a, I mean, you know, it's a great learning, great uh, exposure, and uh, great interaction and uh, inspiration uh, already. But uh, if you want to add something, Aggie, I think, uh, and I think, of course, the other questions which has been come to us, I think we will. Uh, find a way we are also in making a brand name but whatever the initiative which is in ma uh, under making so i think we will also learn something and we'll find out a way we are trying to put youtube channel for the uh, for the recorded sessions we're trying to do whatever we can do in our uh, little time we get from our work and i think we will continue doing but uh, aggy if you want to conclude uh, from your end anything i'm 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 really surprised and uh, humbled but that you know so many people turned up because i had i honestly thought there would be about 40 or 50 people and uh, i was asking manish also that itna kya kiya humne that everybody wants to hear it's okay we did some good work and my feeling was always that if you hang around as long as we did this much work will happen with anybody but uh, we've been i've been lucky uh, many times to get better briefs than others it could have gone to anybody else and they could have done the same job or a better job so i want you all to know that don't worry about controlling the uncontrollable so don't think about luck uh, it's like entering uh, a casino you if you enter a casino you may or may not win if you don't enter a casino you definitely will not win okay so when luck comes your way are you ready to grab it and run with it if luck does not come your way you can't do anything about it so for me uh, you know good fortune providence good briefs luck right break being in the right place right at time all of this these are like falling from the sky around us we cannot decide whether it falls in my patch of land or your patch of land or the other patch of land this is not in our control all we can do is to keep our patch of land fertile that if it falls it will grow If we uh, become cynical and say, "Me to lucky ne ho, uska yaar girte hai," so I'll keep my land barren. When the date falls, it will not even grow. Correct. So control the controllables. Work on your creative patch of land. Keep fertilizing it by listening to other creative languages all the time, so that whenever that brief comes, if it comes, it will grow and blossom. Because I know a lot of people who whose careers are destroyed not not by lack of talent, but they are destroyed by excess of cynicism so don't worry about this because all of us including me piyush we have got like you plenty of better work than what i have shown today rejected lying as scripts in our portfolio so don't think only our work gets approved and your work gets rejected all of our work gets rejected all of our best work has not got released not got made if you think times of india pakya the better times of india film was not made if you think nike the better nike film was not made so all of us have it the trick is how best is your fifth best work is your fifth best work better than the somebody else's fifth best work? that will tell you whether you are you will have a successful creative career or not the first best will always be the best correct the best uh, the a boy in the maidan of mumbai plays his best cover drive it will be as good as sachin's but sachin's fifth best cover drive will be better than somebody else's fifth best cover so try and have creative stamina because that is what will make your career creative talent work so i think agi i think it is absolutely uh, goosebumpish i would say because a lot of work was like that and also goosebumpish because uh, the participants because i think it's just a two way uh, and i think uh, as you said that we were, we are overwhelmed i think behalf of everyone who has lots to say and behalf of everyone who wants to listen i think we just kind of uh, trying to build a small little humble bridge and i think uh, we are very thrilled that uh, people are ready to listen from the people who who are ready to say and i think that's the uh, spirit i think i would uh, say that um, uh, just uh, keep encouraging us the advertising people and uh, be in advertising i'm the uh, i would volunteer myself for life to be a salesman of advertising and hence i don't really get tired to keep on calling you as well as calling uh, oh it's, as a, it's an amazing people. thing what you are doing i don't think even the ad club or three years of i has done it and you are doing it on your own so it's quite incredible 
Yes, thank you. Uh, and I think what I would last is that uh, next uh, speaker is going to be uh, none other than uh, our uh, Angrej is what Piyush call him. Yeah. He's an Ogilvy man and, uh, and uh, really, really, uh, I would say, uh, again, um, you know, unki uh, He's also an experienced man and he's uh, Bobby Pawar uh, for the next uh, Saturday. Uh, sorry, I'll just uh, flesh it again. Uh, so Bobby Pawar, who's been in many places, currently he's a chief creative officer of Havas Group. Uh, he will be here same time on next Saturday. Uh, we will be intimating you in the best of our capability. If someone could not, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, answer, I mean, their questions has not been able to answer, we will try to uh, make them reach Eggy. And I think uh, Bobby's, uh, 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 you can again write uh, your registration details like name, email ID, and mobile number so that we can intimate you and send you the Zoom link. My team can do all those things. You can follow for more updates and more sessions on Mom at Scarecrow at Instagram. I'm not good at uh, doing this uh, television uh, spiel, but I'm trying my best. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and I think, uh, thank you for uh, the evening. Uh, leave your messages and uh, I mean, anything you wish to say in chat box as we requested. Um, and uh, also claps for because we I think physically not been able to thanks to um, the time pandemic I think otherwise we would have given a standing ovation now probably we are not so I think do everything uh, which is equivalent virtually uh, to standing ovation and the applause put it in the chat group we will make sure that it reaches and heard by Aggie uh, in, in nearest possible time or closest possible way and thank you every uh, thank, thank you everybody you. thank you um, yeah thank you mm, thank you Aggie. i'll just talk to you soon um, yeah. after this i'll make you uh, you know uh, reach everything which is from the uh, audience uh, and participants thank you, thank you.
sound of speed. Machine guns ready to go. Are you ready? Hey, are you ready for this? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? Out of the doorway, the bullets rip. To the sound of the beat, yeah. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. And another one gone, and another one gone. Another one bites the dust, yeah. Hey, we're gonna get to do another one bites the dust. Yeah, so we'll um, we'll put together. Thanks, everybody. You can, you can disconnect. I'm ending the meeting. <laughs>